Okay, well welcome back. This I think is probably router 100 because we're nearly there for, uh, for actually routing. Anyway, um, this episode I'm going to do cutter and collet care because actually that's very important as well. Cutters are expensive, you need to look after them when they get blunt, try and keep them sharp um, and things like that. Now, um, a little bit embarrassing because uh, talking about cleaning router cutters and I've just pretty much emptied out my box of, um, of routers and all these are in um, not the cleanest of states so um, obviously I've deliberately left those in that state so uh, you can actually see them being uh, being cleaned. So um, I'm going to clean my uh, collets and, uh, and cutters. So this video you're going to watch me clean all the, no you're not really, I'll show you how to clean the uh, cutters, things to consider and um, how you basically prolong the life of them. Okay, well I've basically separated out the uh, the cutters. Um, now I've completely separated out the cutters. Straight cutters or cutters with no bearings, cutters with bearings, and then the uh, the collets. Um, the reason I've done that is because I'm going to use a solvent to spray onto the cutters, um, just to get in there and start eating away and give them a bit of a pre-soak to get any resin and um, dust and, and yucky stuff off the uh, off the cutters um, and I don't want to get it in the bearings because that will mess with the, the workings of those, um, those bearings. So I'm going to leave those two soak for a little while and come back to those. The next thing I'm going to do is take the bearings off the um, of the individual cutters, but I need to be careful because I don't want to mix bearings with other cutters because some of them they are quite or, um, or zero tolerance, so they're paired up with the bearing to the cutter, um, particularly the roundovers and profile bits, um, of which that is most of them. So uh, I'll take those off and then I can spray those as well and we'll talk about what we're going to do next. Okay, well for some reason the other bit didn't, um, didn't save and of course I've cleaned all those cutters, put them back in the box and given them a coat of dry lubricant. So uh, we're going to have to clean two more. Um, essentially all I'm going to do is uh, spray these two bearingless cutters. This one's a dovetail cutter and this one is a 45 degree bearingless chamfer, or chamfer cutter as some people uh, refer to them. Um, I'm going to spray that on, let it soak in for uh, just a, a short amount of time and then with an old plastic toothbrush I'm just going to wipe off the, the grime and put it to one side just to let any um, any residue evaporate off. It shouldn't take too long in here because it's quite a warm quite a warm day and uh, being in being in here it gets quite warm. So that's those uh, all cleaned off and I'm just going to give them a wipe over as well. Obviously, when you're wiping these, handling these cutters, you need to be mindful that they are sharp. That's the whole point of them. Um, so uh, just treat them with a little bit of caution and respect so you don't, uh, don't cut yourself. Okay, um, I always use a plastic um, old toothbrush because sharp cutters, they just cut the um, plastic teeth off. But it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's firm enough to get the um, grime off, but not too firm that it damages the, uh, the cutter. So uh, now they're uh, now they're cleaned off. I've got a, uh, a dry PTFE spray lubricant, and that can go back in the, in the box. Okay, and what I've got here is a uh, bearing guided roundover cutter that needs uh, needs to clean. Um, the bearings are held in with a small hexagonal Allen key um, bolt um, screwed into the uh, body of the cutter. And um, because I've got to hold it and it's a sharp cutter, I'm actually just going to wrap it in a cloth to protect my fingers and then just break the bond and un unscrew that and I can just hold the shaft and take that off there. Now I take the bearings off because you get a lot of grime 
and that between the bottom of the uh, cutter and the top of the bearing obviously with, uh, with the dust but um, also I don't want to uh, get a solvent on the lubricants that are in, inside the bearing um, that just prolongs the life of the uh, bearing itself um, well and that's so I'm going to give that, although it's got a little bit on there I'm not going to drown it, I'll just take the dust off that set that to one side this is the same uh, same colour cleaner that you'd use for saw blades, drill bits, anything like that. Just uh, so if you've got if you clean your saw blades um, fairly regularly, then uh, it's just the same the same stuff. Going to handle a little squeezy bottle. There we go. Right. Now while I've got this bearing off here, and because of this is quite a frequently used cutter. I'm just going to give the, uh, the edge a quick hone and um, also to keep the uh, blade off. Now this is super fine um, diamond stone um, and I'm just going to use the lubricant of the residue that's left of the, uh, the cleaner and literally I'm just going to drag the cutter over the stone both sides to give it a little bit longer life and then it's just case putting the bear back on doing exactly the same in reverse. It doesn't have to be tightened right up, we're not, talking, we're not looking for lots of white knuckles. I tend to use the, the long end in so I don't over torque it. Um, and then a little bit more of this. Okay so uh, now we've got them clean and ready for, uh, for storage. Let's talk about the storage um, itself um, before I talk about the, the individual types of cutters. Um, I like to store mine vertically in, in boards with either a half or a quarter inch um, diameter hole to, to fit the, the shanks in. They're not in any particular order, they're just randomly put in um, to try and make as much space as, as possible. Uh, when I first made this box I knew, drilled all the holes all nice and neatly apart um, but ended up I could have put holes in between and lost a lot of storage so um, if you're going to make something new um, I'd certainly advise just to uh, basically put the holes in as close as you, you possibly dare um, to fit the, the routers but basically it just means that they don't clank into each other. The last thing you want to be doing is having your your individual cutters rolling around in a drawer because these carbide um, cutting edges are very brittle um, and if they, they hit into each other then you will, um, will chip them and, and damage them um, so that's uh, the, the best solution there. Um, these are all my so the individual cutters. Basically, I categorise cut cutters into into two camps: bearing guided and not bearing guided. And um, so that's a not bearing guided cutter, and that is a bearing guided cutter. Essentially, the bearing rides up against the uh, the workpiece at whatever height, um, and it just means you don't need a fence. On the, uh, on the router itself. Now you can further subdivide those into straight cutters um, and shaped profiled cutters and there are so many, so so many different. If you, um, if you have a look on the internet or um, find a, a cutter manufacturer's um, catalogue the, um, the numbers of different cutters that they, um, they produce are in the thousands um, literally. Um, to go a little bit further, you can have a straight um, bit with which is bearing guided. This is handy for following templates um, because the bearing, just like with the, the shaped cutter, the bearing rides along the edge of the, um, the workpiece um, and is exactly the same diameter as the cutter head. So if you put a template over the top, um, you can follow around the, uh, the template. So this one Obviously, the uh, the template or the the bearing for the uh, the cutter is on the end of the cutter, and with this one, we've got the bearing at the top of the cutter. So, if we put a template over the top, we can cut into it and follow that. You can also have cutters with a bearing. both ends. 
that's handy if you've got it in a table you can lift the bit up and if you've got a, uh, a, an ob shaped piece of wood with a template you can flip it over, turn it round and, and still cut with the grain without risking um, blowing out the, the timber. There's a round over bit, obviously it does the same on the chamfer, it's fairly straightforward. Um, to my mind, a straight bit and a round over bit, probably the most commonly uh, used if you've got straight bits and round over bits and there's an awful lot of um, profiles that you can make with different combinations of, uh, of cutters. And then uh, you can also have a, a cove either bearing guided or not bearing guided and they will match up as, although those two don't, they can match up as, as pairs for, uh, for the edges of two meeting um, pieces of timber. So there's loads of different colours, um, of varying um, complexity and ornateness, so a specialist bead bit uh, for example, or a bit specifically for, I'll get it out, for cutting draw pulls um, on, a, on a template with a, with a guide bush. So there's loads of different colours that you can, uh, you can get and really it's a case of imagination. If you're starting out um, then I would be tempted to go with maybe a small set which has got some straight bits, some round over bits, possibly a chamfering bit um, to start with and then build the, um, build the collection from there. It's always handy to have a, uh, a good place to store them, and I do like to store them with all the uh, the ancillaries, whether it's the guide bushes, spare Allen keys for taking off various uh, various bearings, um, cleaning fluids, and, and whatnot, and all the uh, all the sorts of things that you'd expect to uh, be able just to do light maintenance um, on the go. But there, it's all in one place, and, and ready to rock and roll. Well, thanks for listening to uh, to me waffle on for uh, what probably seems like a long time um, without actually really doing anything to be perfectly honest. Um, but don't forget to subscribe because I'm just about to set up and the next video I will be doing some cutting and showing you some techniques on some basic joinery using the uh, the router. So uh, don't forget to uh, to click that subscribe button so you know when the uh, the next video comes out. See you in the next episode.